Hello and welcome to the DT100 Pass for Transitioning to SAP S4HANA session. My name is Roland Tam, and I'm working as a product manager uh, for SAP S4HANA cross topics within the S4HANA development organization based in Waldorf, Germany. So this session is designed to be an overview to the move to SAP S4HANA topic. And with this, it works additionally as an entry point to the other detailed sessions being part of this track. And you will see on many slides, links and references to them. The whole migration topic is pretty complex and as such actually uh, a 40 minute session can only give you actually a very rough overview about this one. Therefore, I've decided to pack as much as possible in content into that session, maybe even more than I could cover actually on the voice check, but yeah, there's a lot of information which is also meant actually for convenient reading. And with that also furthermore, I want to advertise especially the appendix where I have put actually rich collections of links to further information into that section, which leads you to a lot of actually topics and where you can educate yourself. Having that said, actually, let's talk about the agenda and what we want to cover during that session. So SAP s hana is actually a different product. Therefore, I will give you a short introduction into what are the differences between SAP s hana and the ERP system you may know. Uh, so we're talking a little bit about the architecture, which makes it different, the, the function scope, the deployment options, and the release strategy. Uh, once we have covered this, actually, it's a good time to talk about the transition options you have actually to make your move to sub s um, I will explain then actually what are simplifications, how important they are for actually for, for you actually to be able to manage them sufficiently. And, uh, and I conclude this actually with a unit about where we talk about best practices and recommendations we want to give you, which we have gathered from a lot of actually customer projects so far. Um, we will discover shortly about the sub readiness check for sub S for HANA uh, and then show you actually how you use actually the results of this check actually to, uh, to actually optimize your project setup. Uh, I will conclude the session then with a summary and as said, I will not show this, but actually I want to advertise the appendix. When I come actually to sub S for HANA chapter, so the things are different with sub S for HANA, uh, which means uh, I will start explaining the architectural and content related differences between sub ERP and sub S4 HANA, uh, which will determine the migration, uh, also the migration options later onwards. Okay, so basically, on one hand, sub S4 HANA enterprise management is called the sub next digital core. And why is that so? It's based exclusively on, on the HANA database. Uh, the HANA database brings important actually capabilities like real time processing the ability actually to have actually in one database transaction processing and real-time analytics on the same set of data. And it's also uh, offers you the, possi uh, offers us the possibility actually to drastically simplify the data model of our applications. This enables us actually to, uh, to actually add intelligent automation insights, uh, insights and, uh, and analytics into that system and uh, also add actually you know, a new form of best practices to our product. So having that this and then actually using this innovative in-memory databases actually allows us actually to go to a completely new architecture of our applications with new data models. Uh, we have renewed most of our applications and redesigned a lot of others. We have added new applications. Um, we are working now with cloud and on-premise deployment models. And um, yeah, we have added a new user experience, namely the UI, uh, Fiori UI, the digital assistance and natural language conversations. Um, so on, on that hand, you see actually it's a complete new architecture. And on the second hand, uh, when we look actually on the functional scope, um, the s as such actually is uh, also the cornerstone of the sub-intelligent enterprise framework. And this means actually it's embedded in the in this whole intelligent enterprise suite. And uh, the digital core means um, sub s contains more functionality than just actually what you would expect from a classical ERP system. It also contains a lot of backend functionality from, uh, from things you normally, uh, you formerly would known from the uh, sub business suite seven products like customer relationship management, procurement, supply chain management, but also transportation management and warehouse management. So actually to sum this up, the digital core is more than just the next generation ERP system. And that's why sub s hana is a new product or even the product line when you also look on all the other prices items which come on top of the enterprise management license. So this enables you to consume those innovations that you can improve your business processes uh, and, and actually adapt actually to our modern um, economy. And uh, it's very clear actually to distinguish that the classical SAP business suite 
including sub ERP is a separate product line, which will be also still be separated in parallel. To look a little bit more detail, more in detail about the relation between sub ERP and sub Svahana, you see on, on the left hand side actually the classical sub ERP, which can run on any database or also even on the sub HANA database. Uh, it has its own actually code line. And uh, you see also it, it has a separate maintenance period. And, uh, and, and you can find the statements about the extended maintenance we have just recently announced earlier this year in that link, which is put here on, 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 on the bottom of that left hand side. Looking on the right hand side, when you look in the sub Svahana product family, you see that, uh, that, we, that we develop sub Svahana within one code line, no matter in which deployment model actually you, you decide for. So sub Svahana cloud editions and sub Svahana on premise or any premise actually have the same data model, the same coding. They differ in the functional scope in, in different some other things which we will cover on the next slide. Um, there's also another difference besides actually the, the, the functional scope between sub Svahana cloud and sub Svahana on premise. Uh, sub Svahana on premise has also an additional um, functionality um, built in, which is part of the compatibility scope. So what is the compatibility scope? I want to explain this basically on the next slide. Um, so in ERP, or if you move from ERP to sub Svahana, we have already learned that it's more than just a simple upgrade. Sub Svahana is a complete new and reworked product and the scope of the delivered applications and functions is not equal compared actually to the instances for it, uh, it's not compared actually, for instance, with sub ERP and uh, 6 enhanced package eight. So as an example, there is no human capital management, also shall we call it HCM included in sub Svahana scope. So what does it really mean? So for instance, for customers having an HCM solution running integrated in their sub ERP system, they can also use this HCM within the sub Svahana system as part of this compatibility scope. So SAP provides this and a number of other of SAP ERP applications or your so-called compatibility packs, which offer these functions also for sub Svahana. Technically, they are delivered within the same shipment, so there's no need to install this, but legally seen, those compatibility packs contain temporary software use rights. More details are explained actually in the sub node, uh, which is mentioned on um, here on the slide. It's the sub, it's, it's a sub node um, 2269324. And basically with this one, actually you should uh, look in, especially on the attached documents where the scope is described, where the, the usage rights are described, et cetera, PP. So shortly spoken sub grants, a timely restricted use rights for specific classic SAP solutions in, in, in the Svahana space at no extra cost. The use rights, and this is very important, are temporary, they are restricted until end of 2025. The scope is documented in, as a whitelist document in the SAP node. And the, the, the license condition is actually, the customer has licensed up as Svahana as well as a classic solution. So it's for installed based customers. At the moment, we're in, in the process actually of building successor functionality alternatives actually to those, to those modules we have taken into the Svahana, into the Svahana space to actually to have uh, the functional, uh, functional parity with, with the ERP system and to allow customers actually to continue using their business process and adopt Svahana. However, the, the clear goal is actually to replace this compatibility scope functionality with alternatives actually, which are then uh, genuine, genuine sub Svahana solutions. We will be ready with this actually by the end of 2023 so that you have enough time actually to migrate your, your solutions actually to the successor and alternate five functionalities. So let's talk a little shortly about the sub Svahana deployment flexibility. So as I mentioned, actually we have the you have the possibility to do a sub Svahana any premise. That means you get a classical product with a classical license, and you can install actually this product either in, in, you know, in your own data center, or you can uh, you can use hosting, you can use infrastructure as a service, you can use hyperscaler environment. Uh, the other deployment option is up Svahana Cloud. It's a public cloud. So here, this is the, the, the basic idea is actually that you use software as a service and it's a subscription based. And as you see on that slide, actually there are differences in the way how you implement this. So Svahana Cloud, it will be always a greenfield implementation, whereas actually in on-premise you have different options. And we will talk about this uh, in, in our uh, transition options section. 
there are different ways how often we actually offer upgrades and functions. Uh, the functional scope is different. There are differences in the extensibility, the way we deploy the software and, and the way actually we have the possibilities to configure the software and use custom code as well as actually there are differences in the operation of this. When we come to the release strategy, so you see here actually two, uh, two bars. The upper bar is actually giving the release strategy for the SAP S4HANA cloud. You see actually here, we have actually quarterly shipments of releases. So every quarter there will be a functional shipment. And these, uh, these upgrades will be always uh, actually applied to your system. So there's no way to avoid this. So they, they, they will come and they are non-disruptive. In the SAP S4HANA on-premise world, you see there will be one major release per year. Uh, so, and, and it, it, it's actually typically called after actually the, the year. So there's a, there's an, uh, there's a release of S1909, which means it has been released in, 20, in 2019 and in September. Uh, it will be followed by two functional roundups called feature, uh, feature package uh, stacks. Um, technically, they're, they're delivered similar to a, uh, to a support package, but they also contain functional roundups. And after one year, we go into actually the maintenance and, and, and then actually this release will be maintained by a classical support package stacks with, uh, without any new functionality upgrades. Um, so um, after one year, we have a new release. So um, just upcoming uh, with the RTC on October 7th, we have a sub S4HANA 2020 release now out in, in, in the market. Actually, so this release will start, and you can expect also then the feature pack one early in, in, in end of Q1 next year, and then and, 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 and a quarter later, actually, a uh, feature pack package two, and then it goes into maintenance. Um, you see on that slide also, I've put in a lot of links actually to our release strategy where you can read more in detail about the release strategy. The documents are stored in the sub support portal, and uh, also the related release information notes and release strategy notes. Now let's talk about the transition options you have actually to make your journey to sub S4 HANA. So basically you can choose between two fundamental approaches. The first approach would be actually um, if you intended actually to reuse as much as possible of your existing ERP installation, that means your business processes are still good enough and are modern enough actually to also uh, to, to bring this also, in, also into the sub S4 HANA world. Um, so you have the option actually to keep those things and we will do actually an in-place conversion of, of your existing system. Um, the other approach would be re-engineering. That means you have actually a, a great demand in actually re-engineering existing business processes. That means do something new, either so on, a, on a selective basis, that means only on, 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 in, in certain areas, or you want to have a fundamentally new implementation of your system. So these actually are the two, uh, two options, actually. It could be very customer tailored. That means only minor re-engineering up to actually a massive re-engineering. But let's start actually with the reuse part. So actually the business driver here would be just actually a modernization of existing business processes by more or less keeping actually the idea of the business processes. <clears throat> the transition option here is called the system conversion. And uh, this is also, it's only possible actually when we talk about sub s on any premise. And the idea is here basically that you bring your business processes as they are to the new platform. It will be uh, technically seen a complete technical in-place conversion of your existing ERP system into an s system. Uh, so you adopt actually after this, you can adopt actually new innovations and new functionalities at your own speed. So it's not necessarily a big bang approach. You can actually, first of all, do the technical uplift in, in actually migrating your business process to the new platform and then add new functionality, but you can also do it in one step. The delivery of model actually of such, a, of such an approach, the system conversion is actually that it's included in the shipment. There is no extra fee, no extra license actually for this, for this approach or for the related tooling you would use actually in order to realize this. So talking about re-engineering, also, uh, also actually called very often as a green field, whereas actually system conversion would be the classical brown field. Uh, here, you either decide for a selective business process optimization. Therefore, actually, the scenario is called the selective data transition. Also, this is only possible actually on, uh, in, in the deployment model sub so S4HANA any premise. So the idea is actually that you partly reuse and partly re-implement your business processes. So it covers the migration of the relevant business processes from your sub ERP system to sub S4HANA system. 
So that could also conclude actually that you try to uh, cons consolidate systems or that you do a different cuts in your system landscape, which application will run into which uh, system. It allows you to combine redesign and business processes with re retaining your historical data. Um, so here actually, the way how we how you actually realize this is a combination of using standard functions, standard tools like system conversion, or actually like from the from the data migration in the greenfield, together with a couple of expert functions, which are not available as tooling by with license or without any license. Uh, so therefore, usually the delivery model of uh, such actually a uh, transition approach is uh, that uh, that you do this either together with SAP or as a partner in terms of a service or a consulting project. The last one is actually the classical greenfield. It's a completely business model innovation. Uh, it's called the new implementation. This is possible not only for the S4HANA any premise, but also for the S4HANA cloud and public cloud editions. So it's a completely new implementation, a re-implementation of all your business process and a brand new system. Um, so here, the re-engineering idea and the process simplification is, is a, the business driver. Uh, the idea is actually that you go for standard. That means um, you try actually to go as close as possible into, into a standard approach, uh, utilizing the best practices based on clean core. Uh, which mean actually you take all the advantages and innovations actually, which and, and then use the system as it is designed for. Um, then you actually, once the system is set up and configured, you migrate your master data and your open items and you retire your old landscape. Also here, the delivery model is actually included in, in, in the s shipment. The necessary tools are available free of charge and you can either do it on your own with a partner of your choice or with SAP. Um, a little bit more detail about the different uh, uh, transition options. As said, system conversion as such. And you, you may also watch on the color code. So I have color coded the different system, the different um, transition options actually with a, with a brown, with a green, and with, with, with something intermediate, which you see on, the, on, on, on all the following slides, actually the statements I make on the slides with uh, how they apply actually to the different deployment options. So scenario description. A complete technical phase conversion as said actually. So you move your existing or you convert the existing sub ERP system to a sub S4HANA system. Uh, doing so, we offer a comprehensive analysis and check tool repertoire, which help you actually ensure that the, the data in your system is consistent and that the system is really technically ready actually for this technical conversion. Uh, the sub readiness check for sub S4HANA and a large set of other conversion related tools will help you to ensure an appropriate project planning that you do not miss important steps. It offers you actually the risk minimization because most of the analysis and execution is uh, very highly um, orchestrated and then you will be guided through this one. Therefore, you can expect a very smooth execution of such a project without any surprises. However, why would you choose this option? Because you want to bring your existing business process to a new platform. It will also keep your investment in custom code. You have the possibility to take the relevant part of your custom code with you and adopt it actually to the new data model and to the new application logic. Uh, it will keep all your relevant uh, data history. That means or not only uh, that means basically legally relevant data. And as said, actually, as you can actually stretch your implementation, you can mitigate the risks and investment of a big bank conversion by running a technical conversion project with some focused selective innovation first, that means a technical uplift, then adopt more new innovations at your own speed and with your own budget at a later point of time in a phased approach. So that helps you actually to work with limited budgets and actually mitigate this risk. There are technical requirements to do this uh, to this system conversion via tools. So actually, your source system should be a sub ERP system on any enhancement package. Um, it's an ERP 6.0 system. It should be Unicode. It should be an up up single stack. The sub HANA database is not required. It can run on any database. But if you run on a sub HANA database, it should have actually HANA, uh, the, the HANA database version 2 at least. Because if you're still running on an old HANA database version, you would have first to upgrade the HANA database before you can do the technical upgrades. More requirements at the minimum and maximum support package level on the source system and so on are actually um, described in the 2020 release information note, which is linked here. And you can also follow actually the link here to this community block where you see more how the technical conversion works. Having that this, um, and I want to come back actually to the statement that this whole technical procedure 
is very well orchestrated. You see this on the picture. We have a planning phase, a preparation phase, and a realization phase. Uh, in the planning phase, are a couple of tools which are mentioned here and which I've put links to those tools here on that slide. The Subtransformation Navigator to help you actually make your landscape design. The Roadmap Viewer, which helps you actually to uh, plan and execute your project with a project methodology. The Readiness Check actually to see that you made the necessary prerequisites, that you address all the different issues and give you also statistics about actually the efforts you have to, uh, you have to expect and you have actually to, to work on in, in the different areas. Then we have actually the technical tools, uh, which actually are forced to the, uh, which are bound to the technical migration itself, the maintenance planner, the pre-checks, custom code preparation. Um, all these things are detailed, uh, are explained in more detail in the session DT104, uh, as well as in the sessions for the uh, for the system conversion as well, DT101, 102, and 103. Uh, so I will not go into detail for the sake actually of time. Now talking about the new implementation, you see color code is here, the, the green one for Greenfield. Uh, the scenario description is actually, we do a new implementation of sub S400, means we, we take a fresh brand new system, fresh installed system without any customization. Uh, so you can, as a customers actually would then actually migrate any kind of legacy system that could also be not non SAP ERP system, but also any kind of ERP system from SAP on any release. Um, typically, this is also called the greenfield. That's why we put it here green. Um, why would you choose this option? So you would choose this option if you want to, to, uh, to migrate a non-SAP system, a third-party legacy system, as mentioned, or any SAP system of any release, um, especially if, if it's an older release, if it's a highly modified system, a system which, uh, which do, doesn't fit to your current business and actually in, reno, in, in cleaning out the system and would actually make too much effort. So you would start from scratch by redesigning the business process. We take our best practices and use actually the s system, how it is designed. And uh, this is typically different, like you have designed your business processes 20 years ago. The benefits are here actually that you have the possibility really do uh, process optimization, process simplification based on, on pre-configured um, industry standard best practice content. You use actually where you actually use the software to its best, how it is designed uh, for actually for modern economy. And uh, using this best practice content actually also helps you actually do a very uh, ra uh, rapid adoption of these innovation in a very standardized manner. You see here on the right hand side actually the tool which, which does the data migration is up as far as a migration cockpit. It can be used as mentioned actually uh, for the sources the same from SAP ERP systems and from legacy system with data. Uh, if you have the data extract and um, actually you can feed this the, the data into a Safana cloud and a sub Safana or any premise system. Um, also here there is a detailed session about the migration cockpit, the DT105. Last transition scenario, the selective data and transition. This is the way in, in the middle. So you see also from the color coding, it's, it's something brownish greenish. Uh, the selective data transition covers the migration of the relevant business processes from sub ERP to sub S for HANA. So here you have actually many options actually to realize your target system, your target architecture. You can consolidate several systems. You can actually carve out several things and bring this to S for HANA. Other things even later, you can do a phased implementation. Uh, so it's a very individual approach. Therefore, actually, usually you will work with a set, a set of different tools, standard tools, but also tools you would only you would only use actually from SAP or from third party uh, consulting partners actually with their, with their own intellectual property in the course actually of a consulting or of a service project. Um, it's a highly individual approach which can fit very tight actually to all your individual needs. Nevertheless, actually it's very individual. Therefore it's completely customer individual project engagement necessary. Um, there you see here a link which explains a little bit more about the possibilities you have and um, the value propositions given on the right, uh, on the right side. So as I said, actually it, it, you, can, you can tailor everything to your individual needs. Typically these projects are not necessarily actually the shortest projects, but actually would have maybe the highest value. So last thing I want to say about actually the transition options also don't forget actually the, land, the, the landscape aspect of your implementation. So typically 
Uh, when, you, when you look actually on migrating your ERP system to sub s uh, you could, you know, no matter if you choose actually a reuse or brownfield approach or re-engineering greenfield approach, um, you start actually in migrating your sub ERP application to sub s but then actually you have to look also on in, in, in the context of the system in your system landscape. Well, typically, actually there are more systems in your landscape which are, have a connection relationship to the system like a CRM, a SRM system, warehousing management system, and so on. So in the second step, actually, you also have to make choices how you want to transform your current solution landscape, uh, which is based on a sub business suite seven into a hybrid landscape around sub s being the digital core. And remember, as I said, also the digital core means that a lot of backend functionality from the formerly you known business suite systems are actually have been re-implemented in, into the s core system. So, which means actually that you may, that you may want to relocate business process and migrate data and process between the system. How that works actually, and what is possible, you, you can actually discover using the transformation navigator, which can actually analyze your current landscape and map your landscape actually to a s centric landscape, even with more cloud or with actually with more on-premise flavor, you can choose it. Okay, having that said, let's talk a little bit about simplifications. So, and, and managing the simplification, the more important part. So, first of all, a simplification list is a collection of simplification items. Um, simplification list is something which we document and simplification items document basically the difference in the application functionality, whether we have changed, replaced or removed something or we have made disruptive changes between the functionality you know and use in sub ERP 6.0 and sub S4HANA. A simplification item provides information about the potential impact of this change to your individual system. And the simplification list as a collection of these items provides this information actually as part of the sub S4HANA documentation. So you can read through this, you can do full text search on this one, but it's not only documentation, it's also machine readable content, which is used for the sub readiness check was up as for the, uh, HANA, the other custom code analyzes, as well as the simplification item checks, which are based on the information on the machine readable information in those simplification items. So even in a dedicated simplification items like the business partner and some other things, actually we have machine readable information which require actually mandatory preparation steps. And actually our tooling is checking actually the successful fulfillment of those mandatory preparation steps in, in, in the system before actually you can really run into a technical conversion in order to prevent like actually technical conversion would actually destroy your system because because it's not met. You find you find those simplification items not only in the documentation but also online in the so-called simplification item catalog. There's an application on a on, 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 on service and support launchpad. It's a, it's a web interface and here you can actually select a certain release, you can make some other actually selective uh, selection criteria, filter criteria, and they can look on the on the simplification items and discover actually how what this uh, what this means actually to your business. Um, I recommend the SAP block as for HANA simplification item check how to do it right to learn actually how you use the simplification items, the simplification item check and what you will what you have to do with the results. Okay. Uh, also very important to see um, this uh, the sub s for hana for the sub s for hana release 2020 there are roughly around 630 to 640 simplification items not necessarily 650 uh, but for most of the customer for most of the customer systems with a given application mix only a couple of them a part of them typically anything between 50 to 80 50 to 90 simplification items are really relevant for you and require actually your attention so let's talk about how you work with those simplification items. And also I want to give you some more recommendations and best practices. Um, so I want to start actually with innovation, with the innovation aspect. So sub s hana supports Intel Engine Enterprise and there are actually four main, uh, four main innovations, or, or let's say clusters of information we use. One is actually the digital age user experience and new digital assistance, natural language processing, the Fior UI and so on and so forth. Second one is intelligent automation with AI and with robotic process automation. Actually, you come to a higher degree of automation, so less individual work, less expertise necessary. Um, processes will run faster and, and cheaper and to a higher scale. New business models, and finally, end-to-end -end analytics and real-time steering. So 
The message of this slide is actually with automation, you bring down drastically the cost of operation of your system. With the real-time insights, actually, you can learn about what happened in your system. You learn about those things. You can optimize your business processes, actually, in a way of actually backward-looking analysis. Uh, with, the, with our pre predictive uh, capabilities, you can do also forward-looking simulations. So there's a lot of innovation where you can benefit, even if you exist, add this to your existing business processes. However, actually, the technical measure, actually, how you actually use these innovations is actually they're delivered via mostly via Fiori applications or via Fiori apps. So Fiori apps and Fiori Launchpad and Fiori actually dashboards are actually the user interface to those innovations. So if you want to benefit from innovations, actually the implementation of Fiori applications is absolutely necessary. Whereas actually in most cases, we do a system conversion. You can also run your classic sub GUIs to run your classic transactions. More about this actually you have seen, there is also a link to a dedicated Fiori session. So let's talk about more success factors. So the conversion to sub s requires not only IT knowledge, even if it's a technical conversion, it also requires application knowledge. So you actually have to include your functional stuff and consultants with a broad knowledge of your key application, especially financials, control and asset accounting. So the, and you have to actually ensure that the, those people are available, especially when they work actually in analyzing, for instance, the simplification items and with the compatibility scope. Even if you do not want actually to make major re-innovation, actually you have to work with these items and this requires application knowledge. Consistency checks. Um, so sub s has actually a much stricter consistency check of the data because of the simplified data model. That means actually you have to do some caution pre-work actually in, in, your, in your projects in order actually to look if your data is clean enough and ready to be converted. So consider to set up a pre-project to result data inconsistencies, especially in the finance area. This should start right ahead of your project and uh, because this will help actually then to run the smooth through your technical conversion. Simplification, I've talked about this one, actually plan enough time to identify the necessary uh, simplifications. Take your time actually to learn what, uh, what are required, not just there, make your decisions and take the time actually for implementing actually um, the, the new functionality in, uh, which comes maybe in a disruptive manner. Okay. The so SAPANA database, if you have not worked with a SAPANA database before, um, there are a lot of things that you have to learn about how to operate and, and do performance optimization of the SANA database, as well actually adapting custom code actually to the, uh, to the other performance criteria and rules of SOHANA. So this is more or less similar actually, no matter in which um, um, transition options you're working. Interfaces to other systems. So if you use the standard interfaces to external systems, which are pre thought in the sub ERP system, uh, they are more or less the same in sub S4 HANA. So with, with some exceptions, the, ne the necessary adjustments are virtually the same in both transition scenarios. Nevertheless, if you do a system conversion, so actually we convert also actually all the system, including the interfaces to sub S4 HANA. So here you may only need to do actually some regression testing and, and, and some, uh, some functional actually um, adoption or work actually to adopt the interface in a new implementation, which means you have to implement all interfaces new as well. Then to do some test migrations. It's always a good idea actually to create a runbook actually to, to make for your family so self is a procedure to learn about problems, errors, and how to fix them and, uh, before they occur actually in the next run, optimize the runtime, et cetera, PP. Uh, and also use this actually to, to check whether actually you have cleaned up your data so sufficiently, especially your financial data. In the new implementation area, submodel company is uh, highly recommended, use this as a foundation of an, an, an start actually with a template and, and, and use actually this as a fit to standard approach. It has advantages that the implementation is faster, that you use the software as it's designed actually in, in, in an optimal manner. It will help you actually to implement modern business processes, not just re-implement your 20 year old ERP business processes on just on, on the s uh, actually chassis. Um, and this an SAP model company service actually are also put to cloud standards. So actually here you see we're highly standardized and also, also offers you a future uh, perspective also in, in, in terms of cloud. Clean core uh, um, means actually try to decouple your 
your own uh, actually software lifecycle of your customer applications from the software lifecycle of SAP. So this actually will reduce the efforts you have to undertake when uh, SAP, when you actually, when you want to consume innovations from coming from SAP via upgrades um, and the measures I mentioned here on that slide. So for the sake of time, actually, I have here some remarks about, um, about learnings we have done in terms of phase, pro, uh, phase implementations. Um, customers which are considering the, uh, to migrate actually their business uh, business union, unit sequentially from ERP to sub Svana, like the phase rollout, phase approach, because typically they want actually to uh, to avoid a big bang. Um, they want actually to reduce risk and they want to make it cheaper. Um, the learning we have on this one is actually a phase approach usually neither cheaper nor faster nor less risky as a big bang scenario. But you have always actually to look on the interfaces. You have to look on intermediate actually uh, in intermediate status uh, when you do this phase implementation, which you have to validate it. So all in all, the effort is higher. It can be managed, but actually it requires a comprehensive evaluation of the situation, powerful customer individual decisions, a proper overall planning. Um, is necessary. SAP and a lot of consulting partners offer services and solutions actually for this evaluation and help you actually through this process. So don't underestimate this. Here are some more recommendations which you can read through in, 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 in uh, actually um, also later because uh, explained. So archiving is a big topic. The, uh, the things you need to consider when you want to implement Fiori, um, the authorization changes, uh, when it comes actually to using the VW extractors, there's a simplification item which explain actually which of the extractors are still compatible, which are not. Uh, when it comes actually to output management, subscript and, and the successor Adobe forms, and as well as actually deletion of obsolete, obsolete data. Okay, <clears throat> so the sub readiness check is a tool which you can use. It's a service uh, which is actually analyzing your your source system and and, and gives you. A, gives you information about the status of your system. It gives you sizing recommendation. It shows you your status, which simplification items you're using and what, the, what efforts you have to es estimate in that area. Um, and a lot of other useful information. Uh, the sub readiness check as such is a holistic system analysis and the foundation of all your planning steps. So you should always start with this one, no matter if you do a conversion or, uh, or actually a green field, because it gives you all the different ideas, action things you need to consider. Um, more information about this actually in the session DD114. This one actually I come to the summary. Uh, the summary is actually a summary of recommendations actually according to your pre preparation. There, there, there's a good documentation, we read actually mapping your journey to sub s this practical guide for senior leadership. Now that it's guide about custom extensions, uh, familiarize yourself with available tools, of course. Use the roadmap viewer actually to learn about how to run a project and use a transformation navigator actually to learn about actually your landscape setup and how the landscape design. In the new implementation area, actually remember our best practices model company and the clean core ideas in the area of system conversion, specific topics. Um, remember the readiness check, remember actually the maintenance planner, look on the simplification items, and start early with those preparation and cleanup activities as possible that you have actually that you do not any lose any time and run into any surprises during the execution of your project. Okay, having said this, I'm basically done with my with my session. So you find links to more information with, which are provided in the appendix. Um, here on that slide, you see the radius sub takeout sessions, which are in the context in the same track. And uh, last but not least, actually continue your learning experience of SubTechEd. Actually, you see on this slide actually how you could access uh, other learning material, how you deepen your learning experiences in, uh, in, in the SAP Learning Hub, and how you can actually also test and prove your solution skills uh, by subscribing to that hub and actually make the certifications. Okay, so that is actually now at the, at the end of my session. So thanks for attending that session. And if, feel free actually to connect me if you have any further inquiries or any questions in that session. Thank you.